Welcome to another Alpha 17 video and this time we're going to look at setting up a dedicated server. Now I have shown two videos previously on how to do that. One is going through Steam Client and the Steam Tools and setting it up that way. And the second one is using Steam Command. So if you don't know how to do either, I would suggest go into the description of this video and check out one or two of these videos so you at least know the basics. Because what I'm gonna go through here is not going to do a full step-by-step, -step, but I'm gonna look at some of the changes or differences that you need to set up in Alpha 17, especially if you're doing Alpha 17 Experimental, which a lot of people are doing right now, at least when I'm releasing this video. So if you've set up servers before, you should be reasonably confident that you can do this with some of the updates I'm providing you. I'm also gonna go through uh, what some of the changes are for running a dedicated server in Alpha 17 compared to what it was previously in Alpha 16. There are some changes to the server config that you might wanna be aware of because it impacts you if you're trying to load, uh, let's say you you started a world in uh, Alpha 17 on your local machine through the seven days client, but you wanna load in a dedicated server. So some of the settings are a little bit tricky, so I'll go through how some of them work. Now, first things first, let's assume you're doing it through the Steam client. So I have my client here with my games, and you go to library, and you scroll down to tools, and you'll be able to search for the seven days to die dedicated server. And you basically just install this one. That will give you the 16.4, at least at this this time of release. If Alpha 17 have released, uh, so that's the latest version, you don't have to go through the experimental step that I'm gonna show now. But let's assume you it installs 16.4 and you want to have the latest experimental. Then you right click and you go to properties. Here you can go to betas and you can select which version you want to have. So let's say you want to install the, the 17 experimental. You go to the bottom and you select the latest experimental, unstable build because it's unstable. If you still want the 16.4 version or let's say you want the 17 version when it's out or you want to go down to 15, etc., you can just select whichever version you want here just like for the normal Steam client. When you close and everything, it'll ask to update and you just update it and it will bring you back to the correct version that you've selected. So that's what I've done with my latest experimental. So going through the Steam client is pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to do this through Steam command, it's a little bit more tedious. And if you see here, I made a video of this one, which is one of my earlier one. And there's a few more things you have to do. And if you're on uh, Unix or Linux, this is probably what you want to do anyway. So you have to create a folder of down, blah, 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 blah. Now, what it says here, you do apt, uh, app update 294420. This will give you the latest stable release. Now, if you want to do the 17 experimental, you have to change and add on a couple of uh, tags here. So you have to define that it's the beta one and that it's the latest experimental. So instead of this one, you type in this whole thing. What this means, it will download the latest experimental and the rest of the steps will be exactly the same. So if you do it through Steam command, this is how you do to get the latest experimental, which is 17E currently. If or when the stable Alpha 17 has been released, you don't have to do this unless uh, you know you were looking at this video and you want to go for Alpha 18 experimental, but otherwise uh, it will download the stable version if you remove this one and it will update to the latest experimental if you add these tags. Now, one thing to always keep in mind, if you are playing around with your servers, please make a backup of your saves. It's usually in the user and whichever login is on your Windows, app data, roaming, and seven days to die saves. I've made a video of how to backup and restore your files. I will be linking that one because it has some more de details about it, that this is the usual, usual, the standard folder that you have. Now in alpha 16, you only had the Navis gain and the random gen, and going into the random gen, you would get the actual uh, save file, or the save or the world file, which is alpha 17, which was the seed, etc., etc. So I got quite a few here. Now in alpha 17, that's changed. Now you have differently, the seeds work differently. So depending on the seed, you're gonna get some Suhei territory. There's like Sagoda and whatever else, depending on what the seed is. And then the game name inside. So slightly differently. So if you wanna back up this one, you take this one, uh, 
don't just take this one. This one is insufficient. You need the top level one because that's also one of the seed that is being used. And why does that matter? Well, if you're playing around with the dedicated server, make sure you take backups often, especially if you're trying to get things to work because you can risk messing things up if you're loading in the wrong version, for instance. Um, there are a few things to consider. So I'm going to bring up the server config file here. In the previous 16.4, it didn't look exactly like this. We only had the game world. We didn't have the world gen size. We didn't have the seed. Um, game name, well, we had one name. Uh, so you could basically specify random gen and the actual world name. And that was it. Here you have more. You have a seed as well. And you have a generation size. Why does this matter? Well, let's assume you want to start a game in the client and you want to transfer it later on and use it in a dedicated server. It's possible, but you need to make sure that these settings match. Otherwise, it will not work. So random world generation it used to be called random gen, but now it's RWG as opposed to Naviscan. If I scroll out, it will mention that there is a Naviscan as well. We're now on the game client of Alpha 17. Now, as you see, it's slightly different from before. So you still have a game name, which is, let's say, my game one. And then you have the world. Let's say I say random world here. Um, now, this is what's new. You can define the world size and they are going to be bumping that up once they figure out how to do that efficiently. But you also have a generation seed. So let's say you say seed one. You see it changes the world name as well. And that was the folder that you showed before. If you have nothing, it'll say Suhey territory. And why does this matter? Well, because if I create this one here, let's say I start, it'll generate everything. All good, right? I, I'll spawn and that's fine. Now, if I want to use this with my dedicated game server, that can be done. But you need to make sure that the settings match. And how do you make sure that they match? Well, that's where it can be a little bit tricky. So to do that, from what I just showed, you have to have RWG, which is the random world generation. Now you have to have the world gen seed and I left it empty as you noticed. And then it'll be the Suhei one. And here you have to have my game one, assuming that was the name, right? And of course the sizing has to be the same as well. If you change this one to something else, it will no longer be the Suhei territory, which means that it will fail. Now, if you created the game in, uh, your client, for instance, and you want to load it here, it works. It will load it from the exact same folder that is here, but you have to make sure that the settings are the same, which are the ones that I just uh, just showed here, right? Uh, in my case, it would be my game one and it would be empty here and that creates the Suhei territory. And of course, this is a size. If you have something differently, you're going to have problems. So if everything went fine, it will look something like this. It will say that Suhei territory already exists and loading world data. Data. And of course, if you had different seats, that's fine as well. Just that this one was going to be different, but it will say that it's basically existing already and I'm going to be loading it. And then it go through just simply loading everything. And then you know that everything is good. Making server public, log on successful. Everything is good. And that's fine. If you've done something wrong, it means it's going to start regenerating everything. And instead of Seeing this is basically going to say that it's generating the map, the world, the roads and everything. Right? And then you know that you have a mismatch in some of the settings and it can be a little bit tedious. Um, so it's not impossible that you have issues. But the way when I did this, I created it in the client and I could start it up and ded dedicate a server. And then I could go, go back to the client and run it there as well, because all the settings match. Of course, you don't want to start the client uh, uh, game at, at the same time as you start the dedicated one because it's using the same world folder save. Now, once the server is up, there's still some things you need to do if you want it to be accessible from outside. Generally, you need to make sure that you have port forwarded your router to your computer on the correct ports, which are these ones important to keep in mind. And after that, if everything is running, now it's time to profit. Go and play with your friends and enjoy it. But keep in mind that uh, if you're running 17 experimental, you might have to restart the world save a few times and, and definitely by the time stable 17 rolls out. 
And one final thing, some people were reporting that they were having problems connecting from the outside of their network to their dedicated server. And in some cases, it turned out that they would have to remove the value Steam networking from the server disabled network protocols before it would work. So this one is supposed to be used when, uh, depending on whether you are directly connected to the net, where there's poor forwarding and stuff like that. But it seemed like in some cases it had to be cleared. So the value would basically be blank. So if you are having issues where you can't connect from the, the server, but you cannot connect from outside, then maybe this is something you should try out. But enjoy it. Hope you enjoy this short little tutorial and uh, I'll see you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.